Last month, two popes were canonized, Pope John Paul II and Pope John the Twenty Third. They both spoke of a new Pentecost, and Pope John Paul II wrote an encyclical entitled On the Threshold of the Third Millennium, in which he speaks of a springtime of Christianity and a millennium of unifications. We are seeing these statements of the new Pentecost and millennium of unifications actualized in our times. My doctoral thesis speaks about these very themes, in particular of a mystic who has been called in modern times to serve the church. Her name is the servant of God, Luisa Picaretta. She was born in 1865 and died in 1947. She was chosen by God to bring about, through the work of the Holy Spirit, the fulfillment of the Our Father prayer. She was a mystic, and she had many mystical gifts. Her spiritual director was Saint Hannibal di Francia, who gave to her first 19 volumes the Nihil Obstat, and her bishop, Joseph Leo, gave his imprimatur to these volumes. These volumes that Louisa wrote, in addition to other works, were dictated to her by Jesus and Mary. The content of this message is very important because it completes, it fulfills the Our Father prayer. In the Our Father prayer that the Church has been reciting for 2,000 years, we come across the words, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the writings help us come to the knowledge of this fulfillment, because in these writings is revealed a new gift that is being given to the Church today. It is called the gift of living in the divine will. And it is the restoration of the union of wills that Adam and Eve enjoyed with God's will before sin. It is a gift and not a virtue. Jesus reveals to Louisa that Adam and Eve were in perfect harmony with the divine will before original sin. And every act that Adam and Eve did had a universal influence on all creation. So Adam was the king of creation and the head of all human generations. Because of original sin, they lost this gift, and creation turned against them. So the harmony of creation before sin was lost, and only two human beings received this gift after Adam and Eve, and that is Mary and Jesus. And Jesus reveals to Louisa that she is the first creature conceived in sin to possess this gift and that anyone after her may receive it as well. I mention this is a gift and not a virtue because the saints before Louisa were perfectly disposed by virtue to receive this gift, but God chose not to give it until modern times. And this is why these two pontiffs foretold a new Pentecost, and Pope John spoke of a millennium of unifications that we will experience. The new Pentecost is the Holy Spirit's gift of living in the divine will. It's the new Pentecost in this sense. It's the effusion of the Holy Spirit imparting to mankind the greatest gift God could give us because it restores to human nature the gift that our first parents lost with original sin. And I will talk to you about the four steps of how to receive this gift which can be experienced immediately and how we progress in it over time. So when we say the words, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we are inviting the Trinity into our soul. As the Father beat in Adam's heart, and the Son flowed through his blood, and the Spirit breathed in his breath, so the same three divine persons operate in our body as well. As the Father moved in Adam's will, the Son in his intellect, and the Spirit in his memory, so the three divine persons operate in our soul. Because God is one eternal operation, when he operates through our faculties of soul and body, our acts acquire his eternal operation. Therefore, everything Adam and Eve did before original sin exercised a universal influence over all creation. And therefore, when we receive this gift that they lost, we too exercise a universal influence over all creation. So it's a gift that I will explain in four steps. The gift of living in the divine will is something we may experience immediately by desire. So the first of four steps is to desire the gift. 
Jesus reveals to Louisa that our desire has to be firm. Now, the gift of living in the divine will means that whatever you do, whether you walk, speak, clean the dishes, sleep, everything will be accompanied by God's one eternal operation. So in the moment in which you desire the gift with a firm desire, the Trinity infuses its one eternal operation in your soul. The Father will operate through your will, the Son through the intellect, and the Holy Spirit through the memory. The Father will beat in your heart, the Son will flow through your lifeblood, and the Holy Spirit will breathe in your lungs, thereby establishing a triune indwelling in your body and soul. This is the point of entry. But to grow in this gift, we must learn more about it. Because the more we know of God, the more we can love Him. So Louisa wrote 36 volumes and four additional works. She wrote over 9,000 pages in all. And the purpose of all these writings was those so that she would know what the gift of living in the divine will is. In my dissertation, I've synthesized these 9,000 pages into just over 400, and I present them in a systematic fashion. I summarize Louisa's writings into three chapters called the Fiat of Creation, the Fiat of Redemption, and the Fiat of Sanctification. And if desire admits us to enter the gift of God's one eternal operation, knowledge advances us in this gift. So the first step is desire, the second step is knowledge. The third step is virtue. Louisa received this gift at the age of 16, around 1881, but she would go in and out of God's one eternal operation. This is known in theology as going in and out of the eternal mode. Until she arrived at the age of 24 when she received the gift never to leave it, which means she continuously participated in the Trinity's one eternal operation, which means she continuously exercised an influence over all creation. Just as Adam and Eve, who were the first parents of all the living, were able to impact everything in our lives, just as Jesus and Mary were able to impact everything in our lives, so Louisa, at the age of 24, when she continuously lived in the divine will, was able to influence all human beings of the past, present, and future. And Louisa continued to progress in the divine will throughout the rest of her life. At the age of 35, she entered what Jesus calls the center of the divine will. So the first step is desire, the second knowledge, and the third virtue. And knowledge and virtue help us advance in this gift. Virtue makes us stable in grace. And this stability keeps us from exiting the gift. And the final step is life. Once we are stable in the virtues and once we are stable in grace, we now live in the divine will. But as I mentioned earlier, with desire only, we can immediately participate in this one eternal operation of God. This means that everything we do from breathing to sleeping to walking exercises a universal impact, influence on all creation. Because God's one eternal operation fuses itself with our finite acts. He tells Louisa that he absorbs our finite acts, and he distributes them throughout the past, present, and future. And this is the gift that Adam and Eve exercised before original sin. So Jesus tells Louisa he's calling all of us to become kings and queens of all creation like Adam and Eve. St. Paul prophesied this gift in the 8th chapter to the Romans. He said that all creation groans with eager longing, waiting to be freed from its slavery to corruption in expectation of the sons of God. So creation is subject to corruption, and the sons of God will set it free. So Pope John Paul II and Pope John XXIII, when speaking of a second Pentecost, we're speaking of an outpouring of gifts of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus tells Louisa, this is the greatest gift of the Holy Spirit that God could give us. So it's the fulfillment of the Our Father prayer, because God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and it will be fulfilled in us, in our souls. It is the same union 
that the saints enjoy in heaven with the will of God. It's not the beatific vision, but it is the same union. So Jesus is inviting each and every one of you to receive the gift of living in the divine will. All you have to do is desire it, and God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, enter your soul and your body. And with God, there is one eternal act that now begins to act throughout your body and soul. And God, who is eternal, diffuses your acts into the past, present, and future. So your prayers can influence all humans and all creatures of the past, present, and future because of God's work in you. It is a gift, not a virtue, so it is freely given. And it has been reserved for our times. St. Paul says, where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. And Jesus has saved the best wine for last. May the blessing of Almighty God descend upon each and every one of you and remain with you always. 